Hello and good evening, everyone. So this is Dr. Kamal Sharma. Thanks for joining. Uh, as we were running this poll, uh, uh, I'm going to take you through the pattern and a quick analysis of today's paper. Uh, with the poll that we did uh, is actually polling right now. Let, let's take it after the end of this uh, video's recording and then I'll tell you how you have perceived it if, and what I perceived it and what percentage of people thought it was easy, moderate, difficult or very difficult in terms of the pattern that the paper has been. So uh, I'm going to give you a very important, to the point, precise question. No beating around the bush. I'm not going to tell you what was asked, what could not have been asked. I'm going to do a, a, a recall session as well uh, with the questions that have been pouring in from all of you stud students. And probably we'll be able to capture almost all questions, all eight of them this time. And once we do that, I'll run through the same with the answers and uh, recall of all the options. So as expected, you would have two important aspects that are very often looked into. Uh, first is image-based questions. So uh, this was very much anticipated. Some of the questions were also based on uh, previous experience and exam patterns. Some of you have told me there have been ECG, ACHO, uh, CMR, angiograms, uh, but most of them were cath also, and there were a cath, cath of mitostenosis, von Wolbrockenberg phenomena, uh, the, the, there were some images of uh, other uh, ECG changes which have been asked previously. But in short, there were uh, around eight questions. Some have pulled in as 12, uh, eight to 12 questions which were image-based. I think uh, uh, most of you could recall five or six of them. So around eight questions were image-based. That's what people have been telling me and sharing with us that around eight questions were image-based and these should have been easy ones. They were not tough ones. Some of them were repeat questions and very easy to go. Also, as is expected from the previous year's question bank, if you had done that, you were very likely, uh, the exact numbers, we cannot be sure, but they were not more than six to 10 questions, which is not more than 10% as expected. So 10% image base, 10% PYQ is what usually is the trend in the paper was pretty much in the uh, same pattern. Uh, six to 10 questions, if you were to count as previous year questions, they would be questions where the uh, framing was changed or the options were changed, but still the crux or the central idea or theme was still the same based on the previous year question. So if you could go through previous year questions, and if you could do well with your image-based questions, 20% of a problem was done. Uh, let's go into the percentage and topic-wise breakup as to what was the expected distribution uh, from variants from various stu students. Uh, students were expecting that ischemic heart disease would hold around 20%. Uh, but this was very much on the lower side, not these many number questions were asked. People expected around 15% of heart failure. Again, there were questions on heart failure but not so much uh, uh, on a core rote memory-based question. There were some questions which were asked about uh, uh, drug therapies, et cetera, and clinical framing of the question. Same with the valvular heart disease and arrhythmia. But arrhythmia proportionately has stood up its time and you could get questions. And there were four or five questions on clinical examination. So these were on previous patterns and also whatever you could recall. Uh, that would still mean that the topic was varying all across. And uh, despite the four important pillars, as they call in the uh, exam preparation, the ischemic heart disease, heart failure, arrhythmia, and valvular did not constitute more than 40% as expected, including the clinical scenario, which means there were questions, uh, more than 50% questions, which were beyond the classical powerful four. And that's why I always have been telling you in your preparation, including the last video that I shared, that focus on high yield topics. These are high important topics. These are topics of high value in terms of clinical practice, but these are not high yield topics for an exam point of view. For example, question related to PPDCM. There was a question. The peripartal cardiomyopathy is a very small topic, whether you look at it in Brunwald's or Harrison, but one question is expected and that, that was there. So the same way you will have questions on, onco on cardio-oncology, or you may have a question on drugs during pregnancy or perioperative anesthesia assessment. Like I told you, this is a very important topic and there was a question on dental extraction. So uh, if these are high yield topics, you just read, need to read one page and you get one question. Ischemic heart disease, heart failure, viral viral heart disease, arrhythmia are voluminous pages at the last moment if you try to 
take care of them that's not going to give you a, give you a high yield but they do constitute all together something like 40 to 50 percent that's why these are the topics that you build a, a impression or a consensus when you're preparing as a concept but high yield topics are the topics that you cannot afford to miss you just focus on them that's what i was telling on the last seven day strategy as well and there were questions on the same what about more than one correct option so there was some confusion uh, probably i believe it is a recall bias not being able to remember the word accept or not being able to pick up the options correctly where one or the other times students would complain that at least two answers seemed uh, uh, correct uh, there were also some questions where they had mentioned option a and b both and that was some confusion that some of the students have shared with me uh, but these constituted not more than a couple of questions so I think ambiguity was not there this time, pretty much a clearer case scenario uh, based questions were there. And uh, uh, I think there was uh, very much a good clarity about how the questions were framed and asked. Uh, clinical summary based questions, which the stem as a clinical case, like the dental case I mentioned, they, they were still a good amount here. So this time, as they have always been sticking around amongst the cardiology part, there were good amount, substantial amount of 35% questions, one third of questions which had some clinical impression or background or history uh, or clinical scenario. So most of these integrated multiple pieces of clinical data or had some decision making pathways uh, or some trial based reasoning. Uh, some trials were also designed and asked like Lodoco 2. They asked about Colchicin uh, in post MI scenario. So we all know Colcott versus Lodoco 2. You want to differentiate acute MI from cor uh, chronic uh, stable uh, CAD. Uh, which of the two trials looked into acute MI? That was what they were trying to look at. So. Uh, this is what basically the paper looked like. Um, if if you uh, if you were to ask me, I would say the paper was on the moderate side. Uh, let's look at the poll. We have a good amount of polling already done on this uh, question, and forty nine percent of you agree that it was a moderate paper. Only twelve percent feel it was very difficult. Twenty nine percent feel it was difficult. Ten percent felt it was easy. I think I would rate it between easy to moderate. Uh, practically questions were twisted some of them were previous year reframed some of the questions were repeat were already the image based questions and uh, the strong five subtopics still continue to be less than 50% which i always say i mean you need not spend 50 per you need not spend 80% time on these 50% of marks you need to spend smartly on high yield topics you read Pre-operative assessment, you read pregnancy, you read tumors, you read oncology, you are bound to get one or the other question. Same way with clinical examination. You read that one chapter and you're surely bound to get three or four questions, which again was the case this time. So that's a quick analysis for you. I'll be joining you again uh, pretty soon once we are done with um, the recall. Uh, even if though I have collected a lot of questions, I would still request you to share it with me. You can inbox personally to me, WhatsApp me or share with the team so that we can go through them and again, try to maximize the correct framing of each of the questions, though maybe we may have, but then might be recall bias. People may not remember uh, the full framing and you always remember what you think is right and that's why the, the there is a discrepancy of the number of marks that you expect and the number of marks you get so this recall bias can only be ruled out unless you either have multiple sources which means most of most of the students share it with us or you have multiple uh, uh, uh methodologies to cross verify the same so I look forward to have questions from you. Uh, looking forward to do a quick recall session with you once we are done with a consolidated set of questions with correct options. Uh, in the meanwhile, keep your fingers crossed and I have best wishes only for you. I'm sure you're going to rock it. I think on this paper, again, the scores are going to roam around the same marks that were there last time as well. Most of those who qualified and got a seat got somewhere between 70 to 75 correct. And I believe that's the range. That's how it's going to be. 65 below looks tough. Uh, 75 plus is going to be, again, not so easy task to attain. But 65 to 75, if that's what your correct number of uh, questions is, what you think you've done, I think you stand a very good 
fair chance to get a seat and qualify for the next rounds of the interviews. So best wishes. I look forward to have you for the mock interviews training as well. And stay connected. Best wishes. Take care. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir.